Well, tonight I'm going to go over setting up one of these brushless gimbal controllers. Uh, these are some of the cheap Chinese ones you can buy off of eBay. And I've set up about a dozen of these in the past for gimbals I've had on, on uh, some of my hexcopters and quadcopters. Um, they've all been the cheap ones. I, I've never sprung for a really expensive gimbal. Uh, this particular one right here is a little over 20 bucks. Uh, it says GLB version 3.1 two-axis gimbal controller. And this is pretty similar to the other controllers that I've purchased off of eBay. Uh, one really unique thing I've noticed about this one is that it uses a mini USB plug instead of the micro USB. Uh, all the other ones I've done have used the micro USB, but um, I went ahead and actually I bought three of these. Uh, for some reason it seems like I go through these more than you'd imagine. It seems like every time I get in a crash something happens. Uh, either I tweak the gimbal somehow and short out some pins and burn up a foil trace or you know something on on one of these gimbal controllers. So anyway, I bought a couple of spares, but uh, uh, I went ahead and set one up on a carbon fiber gimbal that I have on one of my hexcopters. This one right here, I went ahead and installed in this hexcopter, but I haven't set it up yet. So we're going to go ahead and uh, plug this thing in, see how the gimbal behaves before we make any changes to it, and then we'll go ahead and set it up for proper operation. All right, you can see I've got my Hero 2 connected to this gimbal, and we're going to go ahead and plug it in, power it up, and just see how it behaves, see what we got to deal with here. All right, you can hear... Uh, so we get a few problems here. First of all, you can hear that high-pitched squeal, and that's pretty typical of the gimbals that I get. Uh, we can deal with that with the setting inside the uh, the control program. Uh, you also notice that, boy, just the slightest touch right here and the motors uh, can't control the camera. So my power is really low here. Obviously it's holding the camera upside down and backwards. Uh, that's not going to be very useful for us. So, so uh, pretty typical. The settings that come with these things definitely aren't, uh, aren't for everyone. So they certainly don't work with my gimbals. So we'll go ahead and set up the computer, plug into it, and make some changes and get this thing working. All right, something that's unique about these particular brushless gimbal controllers, uh, all the past ones that I've done, I say, I've done about a dozen of them, have all required version 2.2 Bravo 2. These particular ones didn't work with that, uh, with that version. I had to uh, go to the Basecam website and download version 2.4.0 Bravo 7. And that just happens to be the latest version. And for some reason, this one worked just fine. The other version did not work. And uh, I actually purchased this from, uh, oh, I purchased these ones off of eBay. Uh, the seller's name here was Daikon Tech underscore one. And they came from the U.S., so I only had to wait a couple days for them. And even on their, their eBay page here, it says that it requires version 2.2 Bravo 2, but uh, like I said, I tried that first and it didn't work. So whatever firmware is on these brushless gimbal controllers doesn't work with that 2.2. So uh, the way you get the most current version is you go here to basecamelectronics.com, go to their downloads section right up here, and uh, this is an 8-bit board, so I went to the 8-bit board, and then it lists the uh, firmwares and graphical user interfaces that you can download. This is right here. This is version 2.4.0 or 2.40 Bravo 7 right here. So pretty easy to find and download. And then once you uh, download it, you run the program, and this is the graphical user interface right here. So we're going to go ahead and plug in and calibrate this gimbal controller. All right, on my particular computer here, this USB port uh, works with COM19, so we'll go ahead and connect. So the connect is really quick. You can see right there, uh, we'll start on the basic tab, the one on the far left. And what we're going to do first is we'll start up here in this motor configuration. And this first box right here, this power, uh, that's the amount of power that the motors produce. Right now we're uh, set at 50. Uh, the maximum value is 255. I've found that a value of 100 works pretty well for me. Motors don't get warm. 
and they have enough power to uh, to control my camera. Uh, the next box we'll go down to is this sensor box right here. Uh, we're going to change this axis top from Z to minus Z and what that'll do is that'll hold the camera upright. So now instead of being upside down it's actually going to be upright. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just run these accelerometer and gyro calibrations and to do that I'm going to come over here to the copter I'm going to turn this camera so it's level. There's just balance there right now. It's not powered. So I'll hit the calibrate accelerometer. We're actually going to watch the status LED in here. When it goes back to the rapid amber blink, then we know that the calibration is done. And then same thing on the gyro. Alright, so that one's done now too. Alright, so next step we're going to go over to the advanced tab. Alright, uh, the noise that we were hearing, that high pitch squeal, that can be fixed by going right here and selecting the high frequency uh, pulse width modulation frequency to the motors. And that just changes the frequency to something that's not audible to our ears. Okay, the next in the RC settings, uh, this one actually is where you set up the controller to take an input from your transmitter or your flight controller. I'm not using my flight controller for gimbal control, so I'm going to select these to no input. Uh, I'm not using roll control on my transmitter. The only thing I want to be able to control is the pitch, so I'm going to leave this selected to RC pitch. Uh, and then I'm going to change my angles down here. I'm going to change my roll and pitch to angle mode, and I'm going to change this pitch value to minus 120 and positive 70. And just from my experience that uh, that'll give me a full range of motion from my transmitter on my pitch. I'm going to change the speed down to 6. Otherwise it just moves too fast. Okay, the next tab is our service tab. Um, what we can do here is there's a little tiny button on the flight controller and uh, when you press that you can have it perform different actions. By default it's set to calibrate the accelerometer. Uh, what I actually like to do is select set tilt angles by hands. And what you can do then is you can depress that button. It powers down the motors for a couple of seconds and then you can hold the gimbal where you want it. And then when the motors power back on it'll remember wherever you've been holding it. I found that really handy. If I don't have my transmitter with me then I can I can set the camera angle by hand. So that look, that's uh, pretty much all the changes we're going to make. We're going to go ahead, go down here to the right button. We'll write them. It says current profile successfully written to board right there. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect. Unplug our USB cable here. The next thing to do is to go ahead and power that gimbal up and see how it behaves. Okay, you can see right now the camera's sitting at a crazy angle. We'll go ahead and plug in a lipo here and see what we get. All right, now it's holding the camera steady. We're not getting that annoying high-pitched squeal anymore. All right, seems to be working properly. Now we're going to go ahead and test our set tilt angles by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button and then I have about a second or two to hold the camera where I want it. Try there. Alright, so now it remembers that angle. So I just adjusted the roll manually. Or I'm sorry, the pitch manually. I can adjust the roll manually too, so I'll try it again. So now it's going to remember that angle. So my button press is working properly. We'll go ahead and return it back to a neutral position. Alright, perfect. Now the next thing to do is to power up the copter and my transmitter and verify that I can control the pitch from my transmitter.
All right, looks like it's working properly. So I can uh, pitch it all the way up and pitch it all the way down right here from my transmitter. And I can also make those adjustments too inside the Mission Planner software uh, if I want. But I found it's handiest to just do it from the transmitter. All right, so that's it. Our gimbal's set up, working properly, and ready to go up in the sky.